All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. All right, I'm sorry. I have been so busy over the last couple of months. I feel so bad um, not posting any tutorials. So let's get into it. And I want to show you um, something new. Uh, this is a uh, hexagon script that creates hexagons. And we can find this on Creative Crash. And it's really cool because if you've ever tried to model, you know, consecutive polygon or uh, hexagons like this and, and do a reverse cutout to get sort of that screening effect like you'd find in, you know, some sort of material that's like a hexagon screen material, it's very difficult. So anyway, it would be difficult to model this, uh, let alone uh, replicate it and do all sorts of stuff with it. So I'm going to go over the um, process of, of how you can kind of do this hexagon um, grid modeling and a new little script that will help you uh, enact the physical sun and sky uh, with a script that lets you choose the photographic um, exposure node, um, which is much better than the simple simple node for the physical sun and sky. <laughs> okay, so I know that sounds kind of convoluted at the moment, but um, check it out. First, you want to go over to Creative Crash. And on Creative Crash, uh, member Fate X has posted his Hexagon Grid Creator. It's a Maya script. It's a Mel script. And here's the details about where you can find it. It's on Creative Crash. And um, this will get you the script. And then we'll put it in the right folder and we'll start making some cool hexagon stuff. Okay. And then uh, member Valen Wagner uh, made this nice little exposure shader script that lets you um, choose between the simple or the photographic node for the physical sun and sky. Okay, and to hook up the uh, exposure photographic node manually is kind of a pain. So this just sort of saves you a lot of that time. And this is a script that has been sort of passed around and revised over the time. Um, and uh, so this is for Maya 2014 um, or Maya 2013 and up. So anyway, this should work really well for anyone um, on a newer version of Maya. Okay. So there you go. So once you get these scripts, um, you might want to load them into the right folder. And in this case, there's a couple of choices. And normally I have a lot of scripts. I just sort of simplified this down to what you need to see. And basically, it's on. if you're on a Mac, you go to your Macintosh hard drive. And if you know where to put this, great. If you don't, just, you know, bear with me. <laughs> okay, so uh, take it to your back hard drive, go to Users, go to Shared, find your Autodesk folder, go into Maya, find the version that you want to drop it into, and then put it in your Scripts folder right here. And in this case, you can see where I have this hexagon creator right here. Um, now there is, uh, with Maya 2014, there's a full separate uh, Mental Ray script that is uh, resides in a different folder. And sometimes, you know, you want to make sure you put it in the right one. So, you know, you, you should be following the correct path. And there's a ton of help online about how to find the right path for, you know, where you want to install a script. But in this case, I'm going into my Maya, my Maya version. And usually you have three sets of, of folders here, your icons, plugins, and scripts. And that's where you want to put it. So in this case, I put both of these in my scripts folder uh, create mental ray uh, indirect lighting tab and this script name is actually the same as the global script name so it, it can be kind of confusing and I've had problems with you know dealing with this over time so just be aware that you should put this in your scripts folder and it's right there okay so with that in mind let's kind of play around with this I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that and, you know, here is the overall rendering that I'm getting just for a, a quick rough, okay? And that I just wanted to see what this would look like in the physical sun and sky kind of setup. So there you go. All right, well, I'm going to cancel out of that. Here's my original project. Um, you can see I just have some simple stuff going on here, nothing too complex. We've got the sun direction coming in from behind. This is that um, grid creator that I used to create this. 
But this is a reverse process, which is not necessarily what you're going to get when you actually start using this script. So I thought it was kind of interesting just to kind of break it down and show you the process of how to get a reverse hexagon grid. All right, we're going to be using Booleans for this. So <laughs> I know Booleans are, can be kind of problematic at times, but for this case, it, it works out fine. So no worries. All right, so let's do this. Let's start with a new project. I'm just going to go to File, and we'll just go to New Scene, and I'm not going to save those changes. So here we are with a fresh screen. This is my 2014 I'm in. And I'm going to come down here into the very lower corner, and I'm going to enact it my... Uh, my script editor. I'm going to come over here and in this case everything is set up for a fresh scene so I'm going to go ahead and go to file and load script and I'm going to go ahead and choose that script that I had um, on my main computer here. I'm going to go in and go to my main Macintosh hard drive, users, shared, and I'm going to find my Autodesk and I'm going to go down into my Maya, my version 2014, and into my scripts folder. And I have a number of different scripts in here now, but I just simplified it. But in, as I put that one in there, it's called NFJ Hexagon Grid Creator. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one, and I'm going to go ahead and hit open. And you can see down here in the Mel section, it opened up that whole script. So what I want to do now is just I want to run this script. So I'm going to go over here to my play button. And I'm going to hit play. And when you hit that play button, another window, which is over on my other monitor, I'm going to bring it over here, gives you a create hexagon grid, which is cool. Okay, so we're off and running. Now, if I set this up from default, I'm going to get one row and one column. Okay, so I'm going to set this up for more like 10, and I'm going to put the columns at 10. And the offset, I'm going to create a little bit of an offset. And I'm going to set my offset at about maybe 2.250. Okay. And interior edges, I, I don't really need selected right at the moment. And my object name is going to be polyhex. And it's always best, I found with this script, to go ahead and click on group hexagons. Okay. That way it'll, it'll sort of group them. And I'll show you in a minute what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and, and create this hexagon grid right now. And boom, there you go. Okay, so here we have a hexagon grid. And if I check over on, the, um, on my um, editor over here on the outliner, you'll see that it's a hexagon group right there. All right, so if I choose the group, that's the hexagon group. If I choose the group, there we go. But notice we set it up for a 10 by 10. So we're going to have one hexagon, which is right there. And we're going to have like a whole bunch more, all the way up to 100, because 10 times 10 is 100. So there's my last one. So you could individually pick these hexagons in any way that you want. For the moment, we're going to be working with all of them together, okay? So I'm going to choose the whole group right here. I'll go ahead and minimize that just for simplicity. And now we have a hex group. There they all are. Well, that's cool and everything, but um, for the moment, what we want to do is I might want to just go ahead and um, I think I'll, I'll make a duplicate group. So we'll head to edit and we'll just duplicate that group. And that'll give me my second hexagon group. This first one, I'll save it for posterity and just turn off the display. So we're going to go ahead and hide that selection. So you see it gray out. That means it's not visible, but it's still there. So now I'm going to work with my duplicate group. And, you know, that's cool and everything. Now, the one thing that you can't do individually is extrude these, okay, um, because they're individuals. So we could individually extrude them, but that's not going to do us much good. What we want to do is individually, or we want to extrude this group as a whole, okay? So the first thing that we're going to have to do is come into the mesh, and we're going to have to combine that. And you'll notice that it gives you a new poly surface right here, okay? And that's what we want to be working with in order to extrude it because it's just like considered as a surface, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. Make sure you're on your polygon menu set and come over into Mesh and um, we want to extrude. So go to Edit Mesh and then go to Extrude. 
And that'll let us kind of extrude these a little bit. You can go a lot. You could go just a little. I would say just, you know, sort of extrude them a little bit like yay, whatever. And that's good. Okay, so I'm going to click off of that. And I'm going to go ahead and enable my, um, my uh, shading here. We'll go with the wireframe. And there we have it. So now we have an extruded group, which is great. So I'm going to go back to my poly surface right here and take a look at it. In this case, I might, you know, I might move it over a little bit. So I'll just kind of bring it into the middle there. Doesn't really matter. So there's my hexagons. That's all cool. And there we go. Now, what we want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take that poly surface one and I'm going to duplicate that again. OK, so I'll go to edit and we'll duplicate that. And now we have poly surface two. I'm going to take poly surface one and I'm going to go ahead and just hide that because I can always come back to these later if I need this hexagon group or this surface group. So I'm working with um, poly surface two right now. And what we want to do is instead of having these polygons be individual hexagons, I want all of this material in between here to form a wall. Okay. And in order to do that, it's a pretty simple thing. All you have to do is come into create. We'll create a polygon um, cube. Okay. So I'll start there and I'll just bring a cube out and bring it up a little bit. And what I want to do is just sort of, you know, bring it in there a little bit so it kind of intersects all of these hexagons. And um, I might come over into my attribute editor here and maybe give it a subdivision width of say two or four, something like that. I'll leave the, the height at one and I'll put this one at two. I don't know, it's no, no big deal. Just give it a couple of divisions. So now you can see where you know it's there, but I want it to intersect, very carefully intersect all of these um, hexagons. So I might want to scale this a little bit overall, bring it down a little bit, and then maybe bring it up just a little bit, hit W on your keyboard there. And that way I can see the bottom of the hexagons and I can see the top of the hexagons. All right, so there we go. And we're almost ready to do a, a, a Boolean, okay? So in this case, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the cube first Okay, and then we're going to select that poly surface, our, our poly surface right here. I'm going to go ahead and, and do a command select on the poly surface. And we're going to come into mesh, go down to booleans, and hopefully, if we choose difference, boom, okay, you might get, you might get a, a, an error, okay? And it says you have to have exactly two polygon meshes selected. So let's take a look at, at what's happening there. So... Let's go back in here and go back into object mode. I'm going to select this first, my cube, because see, before I, I, I was on the surface, and that's why it messed up. So I have to carefully select my cube, and then I'm going to select that poly surface. So I'm going to shift select the poly surface, and we'll try that again. We'll come down into Booleans, and let's go with difference. Okay, and boom, look what happens. You got your basic outline. All right, so pretty simple stuff, but really effective. Um, you know, it, it getting, <laughs> yeah, it getting a wall. So if I did a quick render of that, which I'll we'll do right here, um, that's pretty much what it looks like. So now you're ready to now you're ready to do anything you want to it, texture it, do whatever. Um, let's take a look at the texturing really quick because that's kind of interesting. If you go to your window come down to your UV texture editor, open it up, you'll notice that it doesn't have any, you know, it has no textures whatsoever. So if I go ahead and select that right now, there it is. Um, so you have to select it and now you can kind of see, but in order to get a little bit better UVs, sometimes you might want to just go to create UVs and go to your automatic mapping and that'll give you sort of a indication as to what the front is going to look like. You know, you have these different portions right here. Um, and we can select those individually. We could select them as a whole. Um, I could actually sort of select these and make a, a complete UV of just that top surface. And, and that's what we get. Okay. 
So no big deal there. Um, now you can kind of add texturing or do whatever you're going to do to it, but that's cool. All right, so let's get on to the second bit. I'm going to go ahead and select this. Um, I'm going to go into my render settings. So I'm going to choose my render settings right here and come over here and I'm going to choose indirect lighting. And because I loaded up that script um, that, that I showed you, the physical sun and sky, I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And it's going to give you a choice now of using which shader you want to use. I want to use the photographic because it gives you way more control over everything that you're doing in the physical sun and sky, which is great. So I'm going to choose that. And I'll just do a quick render like this just to kind of show you where your, your starting point is going to be. And that is what it looks like just to start off. Now, you'll notice that we're just looking down on this object. But if I were to sort of manipulate this to look more like a landscape, like that's the, the ground. And I'm going to go ahead and hit render again. Now you'll see your sky and everything. Okay. So let's go back into, let's go back into the hypershade now for just a second. I'm going to go to Window, Rendering Editor, Hypershade, and I'm going to bring this over for my other monitor. And under the Utilities section is where you're going to find these different nodes that are connected to your physical sun and sky. And here is the Exposure Photographic 1 node. So I'm going to click on that, and you'll see over here, these are your controls for that Exposure Photographic node. So I'm going to bring this over. And I usually like to do a couple of things. I, I bring the saturation up a bit to maybe like 1.5. I usually take the burn highlights, burn those a little bit. Um, vignetting, I don't worry about. The F number in this case, I know for a fact it should be about F11 or so. So I'll just put it at F11. And um, yeah, let's do another render and, and see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and save this one. And we'll do another quick render. And there it is. So you can see right away you get a lot more pleasing results um, by you know just adding that little touches there with the saturation and the, the burning of the highlights. Okay, So I'm going to save that and we'll go back and forth between there. There it was before at default and there's after we made those changes. Okay, So just a couple of things to be aware of. But the really cool thing about that is that in that script um, that's by Wagner is that it automatically lets you choose this. Now, if you had to set this up manually, and I have some tutorials where you can see how you set this up manually, you know, there's some steps involved and whatnot, and it's just way easier. This should just be the default node um, for the physical sun and sky, but, you know, maybe we can talk to Autodesk and have them make it our way, <laughs> okay? So that's about it, um, you know, for what we're doing here. Now you're free to texture and do whatever you want. But let's take a look at this um, this this hexagon grid creator real quick again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new scene. Okay, so we'll go with a new scene. I'm not going to save that. And in this case, I'll go ahead and I still have my window available for my hexagon grid. Um, I didn't close it. By hitting the red button there so it's still open so I can essentially still be using this so I'm gonna go ahead and and show you what this offset is this offset gives you a little bit of space in between the hexagons if I take that space out and I just put like zero for my offset and create the hexagon grid you'll see where they're all connected by an edge um, you know I, I may or may not want that so I'm gonna go ahead and, and hit command Z I'm gonna choose Actually, I'll, I'll see if I can choose this. Uh, might have to go into my outliner. Take this hexagon group. I'm going to delete that. And my offset, I'm going to set it, say, like 0. 0.500. And I'm going to create the grid. So now you can see where you have a lot more space in between there. So the more you go up, the more space you're going to get in between your, your hexagons. Okay? So that's cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that hexagon group. I'm going to hit delete again. And I'm going to take this, um, let's see what interior edges mean. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and create a hexagon grid. Now this gives us some interior edge work that we can kind of mess with if needed. But, you know, for the most part, it's a simple script meant for some simple stuff.
All right. So there you go. Um, that's about it. Uh, pretty simple. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I apologize for being gone for so long. I will create some more stuff for you as soon as I get a, a chance. I've been doing a lot of production work. So anyway, there you have it. Okay. So until the next one, um, you know, be a good person as always and uh, read a book because it's good for your brain. And stay tuned because I will not forget about you. <laughs> All right. All right, great. Thanks for watching.